Wait. Good on, Pastor. Good morning, Elder. Sound the alarm. Pastor. Good morning. Yes, sir. Hallelujah to the name of Yahweh. We bless your name this morning, Father. Blow it again, brother. It's not blowing. Blow it, blow it, blow it. Sister Pat, undo yours. Somebody blow for me. There, come on. I need to hear that sound. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Technology's not working with us this morning, but I still felt the stirring in my spirit. Hallelujah. That's That wakes up your spirit, man, inside of you. That is the voice of Yahweh. It always comes through the sound of the shofar. Thank you, my love. She's taking such amazing care of me. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, saints of Yahweh. Shabbat Shalom. I welcome you to another class, another Bible study. If you did not hear last night's study, you need to go listen to it. It's called the Seventh Angel Message. I'll have it uploaded on Rumble and YouTube later today. Make sure you listen to it. I pray that you're all well. I pray that you have all booked your rooms for Passover. The time is quickly approaching. Now, just to make it a little bit better, <coughs> not that it could be any better, but if we could, I think I'm going to add a very special event to Passover. I think we're going to do Tuesday and Wednesday, all day Wednesday and Wednesday night, of course. We'll have a break Thursday so people can go sightseeing in New Orleans or wherever they want to go. Friday night, Sabbath service. Saturday uh, morning service. And then I think that on that Sunday, we're going to have a Toto rally, a political event in one of the uh, centers in town for all of the Toto people to come. And uh, we're going to have a Toto political rally on that Sunday. So I'm putting that together now. I've never done a Toto rally here locally. And that many people have asked me to. So we're thinking about adding that to the week of events to just make it even better. Today, I'm going to <clears throat> teach you a subject that uh, you need to prepare your mind for. It's going to jolt some of you. Uh, some of you may have never heard these things before. Your minds need to wake up and be aware uh, uh, of the subject today. I'm going to share my screen in a moment. Before I do, have you ever looked around the world that you're living in? By the way, I'm still COVID positive, so I'm still struggling with my breathing a little bit and my voice, so bear with me. But Anytime the devil hits me, I hit back twice as hard. So that's why I went and preached last night and again this morning. So I'm preaching to you with COVID, and uh, I'll preach till there's not a breath left in my body. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Hallelujah. But if you've ever looked around the world that you live in today, I believe we could all agree that we're a long way from Mayberry. Okay, does anybody know what Mayberry is? Mayberry is that quintessential American life where neighbors visited one another, neighbors checked on one another, where humanity was just kind, where people, you would meet them on the streets and they would say, hello, how are you today? When's the last time someone looked at you in the eye, not just, hey, walking, but literally stopped, looked you in the eye and said, hello, how are you? <laughs> it 
Yeah. Oh, good morning, Linda. I see you over there, Linda, uh, Andreas and Mike. Good morning. I'll be with them in June for a big, she's running for office and I'm going, oh, I love that Trump. Look at that. <laughs> I'll be there with Linda and there's Professor Toto. I love them. That's, that's a team right there. I'll be there with her. She's running for office. We're going to go help her win her election. So, but in the world we live in today, everything is different. But the question is why? I want to help you understand what world you're living in. And I want to help you understand why everything. Has anybody woke up lately in the last five years? Has anybody just said, what world do I even live in anymore? I mean, where nothing is as it was. Is anybody awake? I'm looking at your faces. All right. Nothing is as it was. Nothing. I grew up in a little bitty town called Bude, Mississippi. Now, Bude, Mississippi, I don't even know if they put it on the map. I don't even know if it's on the map or not. But Bude, Mississippi was the smallest. Well, it must be on the map. We did have a little post office. It's got to be the smallest little town between Macomb, Mississippi and Natchez, Mississippi. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And my foster parents that raised me, they lived on a little Mayberry street where everybody on that street knew. I mean, everybody was all in everybody's business. Everybody knew everything about everybody. Okay. Now, in that world that I grew up in, loving one another, being kind to one another was second nature. <clears throat> the world I grew up in, people cared. They loved one another. We looked out for one another. If you were in trouble, we were in trouble. That was the way it was. Now, I want to give you a little glimpse of, of Bude, Mississippi. So in everybody's backyard, everybody had a garden. I don't that, I just remember that growing up, everybody had a little garden in the backyard. Now, behind our house lived a lady by the name of Aunt Annabelle. Now she was nobody's aunt, but she was everybody's aunt, if that makes sense to you. She wasn't our aunt, but that was Aunt Annabelle. Now, Aunt Annabelle had a yard full of chickens. I remember that like it was yesterday. And us boys would sneak to Aunt Annabelle's yard and chase them chickens. And Aunt Annabelle whipped everybody's children on the street. Oh, we all got a whipping from Aunt Annabelle. Everybody. Now, it wasn't like today where you can't even speak to nobody's child. You can't correct. No, no. On the street I grew up on, everybody whipped everybody's children. <laughs> I'm serious. If you was cutting up, they'd come out there and jump on you like you was their own child. I also remember we went to church without question, without fail, every time the doors was open. There was no, are we going to that? <laughs> That question, are we going to church, that would have sounded like an alien question because you went, that you just went to church. And I'll tell you another thing you went to. You went to every wedding and every funeral. I don't care if you didn't even know them. If there was a wedding in town, you was going. Why? We loved one another. Does that world exist anymore? No. What has changed? And that is what today's lesson is all about. Today, I want to begin teaching you on the age of Aquarius. Now, the reason I said you're going to have to open up your mind is because the church, since they understand nothing about the word of God, they have taught you to be afraid of words like Aquarius, Pisces, 
things like that. They have taught you that that's devil stuff. But that's only because they're ignorant. And I don't mean that in a bad way. They're just ignorant of the truth. But today, we as a society, everything is changing for a reason. Because we are entering a different age. Now, you need to understand these ages. If you don't understand the age, you will be frustrated with what you're seeing. But if you understand the age, then you know to get excited. You know to have no fear. You know to have no worries because you are a discerner of the times. <clears throat> Western culture that you and I grew up in is very busy. We're a non-reflective culture. We do not notice nature. We do not notice the heavens. Very few of us, how many in this class right now could find the Big Dipper? Let me see your hands, okay? All right, okay? That's about 30% of our class could find the Big Dipper. If you would have been alive a thousand years ago, you would have been able to find the Big Dipper second nature without even thinking about it because the Eastern culture was a very reflective culture. They noticed roses. They noticed lilies. They were impressed by the handiwork of God, not by the latest iPhone. Today's children couldn't find the Big Dipper if it hit them in the face. Why? Because they're just looking for the next phone. Now, all of this, it, it explains why we're not discerning the time. In our recent past, without technology, men studied the signs of the heavens. Everyone could show you the North Star because they look for signs. Let's turn to Matthew 24, verse 3. Sister Rosie, if you'll prepare to read for us today. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Let's all turn there. Can you hear me? I can. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? All right. Now, these disciples ask Yahshua, thank God for 140 students now. God bless you all. These disciples wanted to know the answer to two questions. Tell me specifically what the two questions are, Sister Rosie. Um, <clears throat> the sign of the coming in the end of the age. Those are two separate events. This is two questions. What will be the sign of your coming? And tell us when the end of the age will be. Because those disciples knew what we don't know. They understood the ages. Let's go to Genesis 1 and verse 14. Everyone turn to Genesis 1, 14. And Yahuwah said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark the feasts and for days and years. All right. God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky. Everyone, what are the names of those lights? Stars. That they're stars that are in the expanse of the sky. Now, why did Yahweh give us those lights? 
Well, it's to light up the sky. No, we've got the sun and the moon for that. The stars are not there to light the sky. They're not there for us to sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. They're not there to tantalize us with their twinkling. They're not there for us to look up and say, oh, look how beautiful. No. The stars are there for a purpose. And it is to tell you the sign of the end of the age and the sign of his coming. It is there to give you a sign. Now, let me ask you a question. What is a sign? A sign gives you a what? A message. What does a stop sign say? If you don't even have to put the word stop on a stop sign. You don't even have to write the word stop. Why? The sign itself gives you the message. What if you pulled up to a red stop sign and the word stop was faded? What would you do? Anybody with me? Okay. You would still stop. Why? The, the, the sign has a message. When you see a yellow caution light, it don't say anything. There's no letters on it. But that sign instinctively is talking to you. Yahweh created a sky full of messages. Now, what do those messages look like? Look at your screen right there on the left. There are 12 messages that Yahweh wrote in the sky. Listen to me carefully. Now, if you choose to leave because your religious mind is already kicking in, you are going to be the poorer for doing so. Bite your teeth and let me teach you. God said in his word that I'm going to give you the signs of the end of the age, the signs of my coming. Well, today he gave you 12. There are 12 signs in the heavens. And you're going to learn about those signs today. Now, if Yahweh created these signs to give you a message, and you were Satan, and you knew that contained within those signs was what the saints needed to be able to discern the time, what would you attempt to do if you were Satan? I've lost half of you. Let me try it again. If you created 12 signs and these were to be guideposts, these were to be signs of when to keep the holy days, when to keep the feast, when Passover, when the end of the age, the sign, if these were going to be the signs, if you were Satan and you knew that the church needed these signs, what would you do to those signs? i tell you what you would do. You would pervert them. You would steal them. You would take them and repurpose them. All right, now hang tight. What was Yahweh's first Bible? Say it again. I saw you, Pat, move those lips again. Say it again. That's right. That was Yahweh's first Bible. Now, let me ask you this. Did Adam and Eve have a Bible in their hand like you do? No. Even Noah. Did Noah have a Bible like you do? No. But do you think God ever left his people without a Bible? No. He wrote the first Bible in the sky on a canvas of blue. The next Bible is nature here on earth. That's his second Bible. His third Bible is the one you hold in your hand. 
And you need to remember that. But Satan has an agenda. He wants you ignorant. He wants you in church, clapping your hands, running the aisles, screaming and shouting to the same thing you've heard ever since you were born. He wants you to stay ignorant. He don't want you knowing what season it is. He doesn't want a bride prepared for the Messiah. He doesn't want you to be awakened to these truths. Now, it's very important that you understand how Satan speaks to the church. Y'all, my sister is blowing my phone up. Baby, I'm live right now. I'm live. I'm, I'm, I'm live. <laughs> hey, good morning. I love you. <laughs> I'm live. <laughs> I'm talking to a lot of people right now. I, I, yeah, I lo I'm live right now. <laughs> I love you. I'll call you as soon as we get, get off. I love y'all. All right. Sorry about that. Anyway, they think, you know, they can have my attention anytime. How does Satan speak to the church? He does it through the mouths of preachers. He will use these preachers to convince you not to be awakened, but to not try and watch for the times. Let's go to 2 Peter 3 and 8, 1 Chronicles 12, 32, Matthew 16 and 3. 2 Peter 3 and 8. Oops. But beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with Yahweh, one day is as a thousand years in a thousand years as one day. Now, what did Peter just say there? He said, if you forget everything I've ever preached to you, if you forget the whole Bible, if you forget the whole gospel, don't forget this one thing. That's how important this revelation is. Don't forget. That when you see one day in the scripture, you're seeing a thousand years. And when you see a thousand years, that's one day. Now, this truth, you hardly hear it taught anymore in the church. Satan wants you to forget what time it is. Read First Chronicles 12.32. Uh, Sister, Ron, hold on. Sister Rhonda Connor, you had your hand up. I, I, can't, I, just to, I, I wanted to ask a question. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I, I do a Bible study every day, believe it or not. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and I have, I have 30 students. Most of them are my children, grandchildren, and close friends. Wow. Kids. But I, I have been trying to... to make a point and I want to make sure that I'm making the right point and this kind of goes with it. The Bible tells us what we need to know God, to know Jesus. But the Bible was written by Israelites to Israelites. Right. And these people passed on the knowledge that they had to their children. So when we look, for instance, at the book of Jonah, Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and preach. And it says that Nineveh was evil, but it didn't tell us what evil they did. And is that because the people had passed down this information from child to child and they knew the history? where we don't necessarily know right. all the history behind the scripture. The entire and Bible, Sister Rhonda, is written in broad strokes for a reason. Right. And yes, ma'am. But we need to, we have been told that we don't need to read books or birth the Bible. We need to read the Bible. And I just don't agree with that. I need no. think we need to go back and read the history. Oh, absolutely. So that we know, we need to know that 
Jesus died for us, yes, but why? That's and exactly I just, right. I just wanted to kind of get that. Thank you. That's right. That is so good. And thank you for what you're doing with your daily Bible study with your children and grandchildren. That is just, that is so wonderful. Keep I it up. <laughs> Sow those seeds that you keep sowing the seeds, Sister Rhonda. Amen. All right, Sister Rosie, pick back up at First Chronicles 12, 32. From the sons of Issachar who had understanding of troublous times and knew what Israel should do. 200 chiefs with all their brothers under their command. Now, God is calling you and I to become an Issachar. What was so special about Issachar? He understood the times. Many of you watching me right now, you don't understand the times. Many, uh, the world definitely doesn't understand the times. Therefore, people are committing suicide. Miss America or you Miss USA or whoever she was just killed herself. Um, we just had a member of Toto's army just take her life, kill herself. Do you know why this is happening, folks? People don't understand the world's different and they don't get it. People don't even talk to each other no more. They don't, they, they don't understand the time. But Issachar understood the times today it's time for you to understand time for example let me just call on somebody well i tell you what if you if you if you want to answer the question raise your hand why did yahweh not create the earth the heaven and the earth in one day why did he why did he do it in six days. Anybody wants to do it, raise your hand and answer it. Why did Yahweh not create it all in one day, Sister Jill Sidock? Well, I'm guessing so he created the time, the ages, so there would be division Amen. of ages. What did he do, Sister Jill? He set the pattern. Exactly. What does a seamstress do? They will get a pattern and you've got to cut the cloth in the what? The pattern. When Yahweh created the earth in six days, he set the metronome. Do y'all know what a metronome is? It's where they'll take that little ball, pull it back, and it starts clicking, right? And the other ones click right behind it. It sets the pattern. Six days, 6,000 years. We are currently in the year 5782 on the Hebrew calendar. I have evidence that we're actually further up than that, but we won't get into that right now. But the point I'm making is there was a pattern set. And those in this class today will be among the very few in the whole world that understands this pattern and therefore understands the times. Matthew 16 and verse 3. And in the morning, it will be stormy weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? How many hypocrites do we have today? Those that can do everything but discern the times. I want you to hear me. For those that say, that they are waiting on the Lord to return. That is not what he told you to do. Oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. That's not what he told you to do. He didn't say wait on me. What did he say? Watch and wait. He said, watch. How many of you are watching? If you're not a watcher, then you're just a waiter. And therefore, you're going to be caught unaware. You're going to be discouraged by what's going on in the world around you. Because you're not watching. Become a watcher. Become obsessed with watching. Well, what do we watch, Brother Vaughn? Well, it's real easy. Right there, you watch the clock. 
There's the clock. And guess what's on that clock? Just like the clock in your house, 12 hours. <laughs> if you count around this clock, you'll, you'll count 12 houses, 12 hours. Oh, some of y'all looking at this screen like, what is this man talking about? Look at that. There's your clock. I'm going to teach you how to read the clock. Give me time. This is the clock of the Lord's return. If you ever learn to read this clock, you will never spend another day worried about anything. Hallelujah. You'll know everything's right on time. Remember this, earth, mankind, and time is on a schedule. Now, you need to get on that schedule. This is why you keep the weekly Sabbath day. Right now is the seventh day of the week. Right now, we are out of, of, we are out of the rule of Satan. On the Sabbath day, we're celebrating the rule of Christ. And the sons, the brothers of Christ. We are represent today is a day of celebration of when the clock runs out. Hallelujah. There's your clock. The great mathematician is keeping time. Do you know the entire universe is built on numbers? Everything is built on numbers. Did you know that? That's why I love biblical numbers so much. Sister Sandra Brawlier, go right ahead. Am I correct in believing that this is the gospel that was written between, that God gave from Adam to Moses before yes. we had the written word? Yes, this is your first Bible. This is the first Bible God ever wrote. And y'all, you're looking at it. Keep looking at your screen. I'm making, I'm sitting it there for a reason. Because I want to show you the, the specificity of your God. If not, Satan will convince all of you that everything's out of control. Everything's in chaos. What's going on in the world? Not me. I know. See, I know, baby. I'm a knower. And I'm going to turn you into a knower. And you ain't never going to worry about nothing. There's your clock. All right. Now let me show you how this clock is set up. All right. Now this clock is set up in a circular motion. And the, 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 the 12 houses... This sun travels around this clock, just like the hour hand on your clock at home. And what does it do? It will go and sit in each one of these houses for 30 days until it makes a full circle. All right? Now, each of these houses have a name. Let's start up here on the right. Because this is where the journey begins with Virgo. Now, Virgo is a virgin. And when you follow the story, you start off with a virgin. Now, she's holding seed in her hand. She's holding wheat in her hand. This tells that a virgin shall conceive. Now you follow it around, and you, you go right behind her there. You find Scorpio. Then you find Libra. Now every one of these signs is saying something. And I don't have time to get into what all they're saying today, but let me bring you around the clock. Follow my arrow. And let me bring you over here to Leo the Lion. Look, the story starts with a virgin, goes all the way counterclockwise, and it ends with the end of the story, which is what? The, the conquering king, the, the <clears throat> Leo the lion, the tribe of Judah, 
What did the Bible say in Revelation about the scroll that was sealed that no man could read? He said that he that Yahshua come forth as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The story starts with a virgin. Now it goes to uh, uh, Libra, meaning what? The scales are out of balance, meaning your sin is greater. It's got you out of balance with God. I, the whole, every chapter tells a story, all right? But Leo the king, the lion, is the end of that story. You need to know this story. Now, even though every day is a thousand years, and if you'll follow this story around, you will notice that there's 12 houses. Okay? Now, please stay with me. There's 12 houses, but there's only six days. That's because every age is two days. Write in your notes that an age is two days. So 2,000 years. Now this is important. When you put these days together into twos, you come up with six ages of time. Now, there's your ages. They last approximately 2,000 to 2,150 years for that full cycle to make it spin. And I'm not trying to explain all of this to you, but I want to give you a brief synopsis. All right. So remember the question we started off our class with. What will be the end of the age. Those people knew that the day, an age was 2,000 years. They wanted to know what sign, oh, please hear me, what sign would he come back under? This is important. When they said, what is the sign of your coming? They're not asking, you know, they're saying, which of these signs are you coming under? Because they understood the signs. Now, you and I have been living in the last 2,000 years under an age called Pisces, that age is coming to an end. We are now crossing over to another age. Since Yahshua came under the Pisces age, but he's returning under another sign, under another age. We are now entering slowly into that age. It's called the age of Aquarius. <clears throat> Why is this important? Because when you know the sign he's coming back under, then you know what Daniel knew. How do you think the wise men knew where to find him because they saw his sign. They saw his star. They were not ignorant as the modern church is. Now, I want to prove to you that we're entering into another age. Does it feel like in this life that the boundaries are all disappearing? Used to, a man was a man. A woman was a woman. A dog was a dog. Used to, uh, there was concrete truth. Does it feel like knowledge is increasing? That we're moving from law and order and structure to this fluidity, this, this where there's no more boundaries? 
If you'll stay with me today, you're going to learn something. Do you feel like you're moving out of safety where you knew the rules to where now everything is offensive to people? Everything, everything is changing. What about the definition of family? How many remember there was a day for 6,000 years when everybody knew what you meant when you said a family? How did that, how did that just change all of a sudden? I really need you to think. For 6,000 years, nobody wondered what a family was. What, what, what was a family from the Garden of Eden? A mama? A daddy, a baby, not a mama, daddy, and a dog, not a mama and a mama and a baby. That, that was the rule. That was, and now nobody even knows what a family is anymore. Suddenly foundational things that have never changed are all of a sudden changing. Can I get an amen? I mean, come on. Is there a reason for this? Why all of a sudden, the what about the monarchies of the world? From the beginning of time, there was monarchies. There was always a king or a queen. Why no more? Why is there no law and order anymore? There's a reason. Number one, there's biblical prophecy that men would become lovers of self rather than lovers of God. These are your biblical, this tells you when the age changes. They ask Yahshua, what will be the sign of your coming? And this prophecy comes forth that these will be the identifying traits that men will be lovers of self more than lovers of God. And that men would despise government and law. They would hate a republic. They would hate the rule of law. And they would want it to be done in the way the majority wants it done Forget law and order. They would rather follow vain philosophies than biblical truth. They would be their own gods. Abominations would be accepted as normal. Nuclear war would be a sign of this age. Now here's the truth. The ages are changing. Change is literally in the air. Literally. Or the cosmos or the universe. There is a change happening and you've been caught in the middle of it. <coughs> Pardon. There's a change coming. There's a change here. And you are caught in the twilight zone. What do I mean by the twilight zone? What is twilight? It's the changing of the day. If you feel like you're living in the twilight zone, you are. The age is changing. Let's see what the scripture says about the ages. Now, everybody write the word Maseroth in your, in your notes. Maseroth. What is a Maseroth? It's a garland of crowns. It's a, you know, the, the garland crowns they used to wear? That's a Maseroth. But it's also a Hebrew word for what the world calls the Zodiac. Let's see what the Bible says about it. Let's go to Job 38, 31 through 32. 
Now, when somebody tries to tell you, oh, that's the Zodiac, y'all are talking about the Zodiac. You're going to have the scriptures you need to show how ignorant they are. Let's go to Job 38, 31 through 32. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades? Or Hold on. Hold on, let's go it slow. Who okay. bindeth the chains of Pleiades? Does anybody know what Pleiades is? It's a group of what? Stars. A constellation. It is a constellation. Now, the world says it's part of the Zodiac. Keep reading. Or loose the bands of Orion. Oh, what about Orion? There's another constellation of stars. Read. Can you bring forth the Maseroth? Who? Yahweh's asking these questions. Who brought forth the Zodiac? Oh. Oh, did I just shock you? <laughs> because Satan stole the Maseroth and renamed it Zodiac. But Yahweh said, I brought forth, I created that clock. I created the Maseroth. Read. Uh, constellations in their seasons. Can you guys? Who, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who brought forth these houses of the Zodiac in their season? Who did that? I did. And yet the church tells you, oh, don't mess with none of that. Oh, no, no, that's, oh, no, we're not, we're not looking at the stars. We look into the Bible. If I've heard it, heard it a million times. But what did Yahweh just say? Who created that, Satan or me? Read. Can you guide Arcturus with his sons? The bear can you guide? Can you guide Arcturus with this son? You know what that is? A sign of these constellational houses. He said, who guides these houses? I do. Read. Do you know the ordinances of heaven? Can you do you know? Do you know? I'm asking you that's watching. Do you know the clock of heaven? No. Do you know the circuit that it's going? Do you know how to tell the clock? Read. Can you can you establish their rule upon earth? Can you establish their rule? Did you hear what Yahweh just said? The stars rule the earth. What? Their houses, their constellations will tell you what's happening on earth prophetically. Read. Can you raise your voice to the clouds so an abundance of water may cover you? Now, let's go to Job chapter 9, verse 7 through verse 9. You can't argue with these scriptures, children. I know some of your minds is trying to argue with it, but you can't. Yahweh said, I created it all for a reason. I guide these stars. I've put them in their circular path for a reason so that you can know what time it is. Read. He commands the sun and it does not rise. He seals off the light of the stars. He alone stretched out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He is the creator of the bear, Orion, and Pleiades. Oh, wow. He's the creator of the bear. Now, Brother Vaughn, what is the bear? It's a symbol of a constellation, just like Virgo is. You know, what is Virgo? Virgo is a group of stars. The bear is a group of stars. So Yahweh is referring to a constellation by a symbol. Read. 
in the constellations in the south. Should I keep going? Go through verse nine. That was it. Okay. The book of Amos chapter five, verse eight. Now, while she's going there, let me call on somebody and ask them a question. Let's see. Let's, uh, I tell you what, if you want to answer the question, raise your hand. Who named specifically the Maseroth and all the actors in it? Raise, raise your hand. Sister Sandra. Well, my hand was raised for another question. Oh, okay. I, well, do this one. <laughs> I would say it was Yahweh. Amen. You had another question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, when we were speaking of the age of Aquarius and, and the removal of the foundations and the, everything being confusing, it yeah. brought to my mind uh, Babylon. And yep. uh, is the age of Aquarius the establishment of Babylon? Yes, ma'am. We're on our way there. Hang tight. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. So let me ask you a question. Sister Dot. If Yahweh named these stars and set them in course, why do we say that the zodiac, or the zodiac is Satan's creation? I can't hear you, Sister Dot. Well, she's not accepting my request to unmute. Oh, oh there that, she goes. Here she that, is. That's a corruption of God's word. There you go. Now, it's just like marriage. Yahweh created marriage, right? But Satan has perverted marriage now. So now do we say marriage is a bad thing? No, it's still a God thing. Our job is to rescue it from the hands of Satan and return it to where Yahweh intended it to be. Amen. All right, Amos 5 and 8. Seek him who created the seven stars, Pleiades, in Orion, who changes the shadow of death into morning and darkens the day into night, who summons the waters of the sea and pours them upon the face of the earth. Yahweh is his name. Hallelujah. Who set the course of the, of the Maserat? Yahweh is his name. That's his name. Now, Maseroth is the Hebrew word for Zodiac. And all these years, we were taught that was satanic. Let me tell you what's satanic. Satan perverted it from being a marker for holy time and sacred seasons to us turning to the stars to govern our lives and to direct our daily lives instead of trusting in the Father. Worshipping the creation more than the creator. You wake up and you go read your horoscope to know how your day is going to go rather than kneeling on your knees and talking to the Father about your day. That is the corruption of this holy Maseroth. Brother Joseph Aniquich. Hey, brother Shane. Good morning, Hello, brother. I wanted I, I I just very quickly wanted just to say that um, early on in my life, I I was unfortunately gifted into reading stars, but not for Yahweh. And right. and but I, I strongly believe now with what you're saying, and I've studied I've studied Maseroth for some time now that God had that gift in my life, but Satan yes. was perverting it. Yes. To use it for my advantage and to um, trip people up. Yes, uh, and, to, so, and to bypass the creator. Yes. So praise God. I, I, I just praise God. Thank you for sharing this with everybody because I've been re studying this for like seven years, the Maseroth. Wow. Beautiful. It, it is beautiful. And, and as the people begin to see the perfection of it, you'll get more faith in God, more faith in the creator. That he and I'm is an Aquarius. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> now let's talk about the word ages. The English word ages in Greek 
is aeon, which is A-I-O-N. It simply means a period of time. Let's read Matthew 12, 32. While we're waiting, Eric has his hand up, Pastor. Oh, Brother Eric, go right ahead. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Um, so I was, well, let me back up. I had never heard the term Maseroth okay. until I started following you. Everything was, was Zodiac, and we were taught that it was evil. Yes. You know, and, and clearly it was, yeah, it's evil because they didn't want us to, to learn about it, to, to follow it. Right. My understanding from those teachings now, when Christ returns, he is supposed to come through the constellation Orion. Is that correct? Uh, yes. You're, yes, sir. Okay. And of all the constellations. I'm going to break it down a little bit more than that, but yes, sir. Okay. Of all the constellations, the, the Big and Little Dipper are the only two that I was ever able to pick out of the sky. Everything else didn't make, uns, make any sense. And I'm like, how can you get a horse or a bear out of right. you know, that little drawing? You're right. But one thing about the Maseroth, in every culture, the symbols since the, since the days of the Sumerians have all been the same. It's, it's, an, it's amazing where that knowledge came from. Amen. Okay, Thank you. You're welcome. Matthew 12, 32. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, neither in this age nor in the age to come. All right. Here we go, folks. Yahweh is talking about, see, Yahshua knew the ages. They were all educated in the Maserat. They were all watchers. They knew the ages. Yahshua said, you will not be forgiven in this age, nor the next age. See, he understood what I do, that Yahweh's not, this is not the only time Yash Yahweh's forgiving sins in this age. He's going to forgive them in the next age as well. At the great white throne judgment. See, Yahshua understood that. Thank God we now do. He said the age. Now, what age is he referring to when he says not in this age? The age of Pisces. Yeshua was born in the age of Pisces, which happens to just be a what? A fish age. Come on, what's the symbols of Pisces? Fish. There you go. And he came to fish for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? The light went on. Amen. The light came on. He said, Yahweh said, I will send fishers after you, talking about the lost tribes, and Yahshua was that fisher. Why do you think the Christian symbol is the what? A fish. Because the Christian church existed under the Piscean age. But now Yahshua said, there's another age still to come, and that is the age of Aquarius. Now, brothers and sisters, you, knock, knock, you are now living in the changing from Pisces to Aquarius, and that is the difference you're feeling all around you, because I'm going to show you what happens in the age of Aquarius, how it's totally opposite of Pisces. Have you ever heard of the spirit of the age? It's in your Bible. Paul said not to be affected by the spirit of the age. Every age carries a spiritual influence over it. Demonic influence. It has a spirit to it. It has a feel to it. 
And in the last age of Pisces, it's going to feel totally different than what's coming. Now, Christ is asked, when is the end of this age? Read what Yeshua said in Matthew 24 and 24. For there will arise false messiahs and false prophets who will show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. So what will be the primary sign of the changing of the age? They said, how do we know the age is changing? He said, deception will be everywhere. Keep reading. Behold, In Matthew 24. You want me to keep going after end of yes, 25? Yes, Yeah. Behold, I have warned you beforehand. So when they say to you, behold, he is in the desert. Do not go out. Behold, he is in the holy place. Do not believe it. For as lightning comes out of the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcasses are, there will the eagles be gathered together. What did he just say? He said, whenever they try to teach you about a secret rapture, don't believe a word of it. When they try to tell you, oh, he's going to come over here. He's, he's going he's gonna, to, it's going to be unknown, unexpected. Oh, be ready. It's over here. Oh, he's gonna, he said, don't believe a word of it. Deception going to be everywhere. He said, you'll know when I'm coming. He said, because I'm going to split that sky wide open from east to west like the lightning. You ain't going to miss it. He said, you ain't going to miss this. Ain't nobody getting secretly raptured in no cave. No, no, no. He said, I don't worry about it. He said, you're going to know all about it when it happens. But notice what he said. The changing of the age is going to bring the most deception you've ever seen. It's going to be so deceiving. Listen, listen. It's going to be so deceiving that men are going to think they're women. It's going to be so deceiving to where they're going to steal elections right from under you and they're going to really believe they got by with it. Everything's, it, it's going to be an age where you listen, where you don't believe nothing you see. How many of y'all feel like you're living in that time right now where everything is a deception? Even conservative leaders on the right, podcasters, even those guys are, are deceiving mm -hmm. the patriots and the believers. It's just like, who do what? What is truth? He said, that will be the sign when you don't you don't even know what's truth anymore. That's when you'll know the ages have changed. Notice this, the coming of the Messiah does not happen in this age. So any are the age of Pisces that we're coming out of. They ask about two totally separate events, the end of the age and then the second coming because they knew Yahshua would return in the next age. Because the second of coming will not appear in this age. You will begin to hear the gospel of the kingdom being preached at, as the age is ending. Notice what Yahshua says. The day nor the hour no man knows. Why? Now he wasn't talking about his coming. Go back and read that so people will know I'm not making that up. Oh, go back to Matthew 24 and 24. And I want people to, to hear the question. For there will arise false messiahs. In Hold false on, that, that's not the right verse. I'm sorry, my fault. Let's go to Matthew 24, where they ask the question. Uh, oh, go to verse, verse three, verse three. Of 24. 
Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? What will, this, what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And what did he say? He answered and said to them, be on guard so that no man deceives you. For many will come against my name saying, I am anointed to preach salvation and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Now go to Matthew 24 and 35 and 36. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my words, my teachings pertaining to the law and the prophets will not pass away. Only Yahuwah knows the day and hour, but no man, no man knows that day nor hour. Now no we've always thought, we've always thought that Yahshua was saying that no man knows the day of his coming. But that is not the question he is answering. No man knoweth the day or the hour of the end of the age. Why is that? Because an age does not end on a certain day or a certain hour. An age goes through what is called a cusping, C-U-S-P, a crossing over, a blending. You are right now in the blending, and there is no day or hour when the end of the age will come. Yahshua said, no man knows the day or the hour when the end of the age will come. It's just like gears. They send out, they pull in. Yahshua was saying that even he did not know the exact day when the ages would change. Because it is not until the ages change that he can come. Brother Christopher Agwam. Yes, hi. Good morning, Pastor. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So I, I wanted to, because I also, um, you know, the numbers uh, intrigue me. Um, one of the questions I've always had is, like, when uh, Jesus Christ um, died, he rose on the third day. You know, what is that meaning of why three? Why the third day? Uh, is the third day an indicator of the ages? Um, you know, it's just one of those that, yes, sir. that interests it me. Uh, and so forth. And it kind of seems like that's what it's referring yes. to the third, it is, after it's the also, third age. It's also, re it's also referring back to the prophecy of Jonah, where it, the sign of Jonah, which also is a prophetic number of three days. And uh, also in the book of Hosea, it says he has, he has wounded us for two days. On the third day, he will raise us up. So this is also a prophecy of the restoration of the house of Israel, which happens in the third day, which will be uh, the age of Aquarius. Great question. Sister Sandra. Sister Sandra, is your hand raised? I can't hear you. Honey, you got to turn this heat off. It's killing me. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, verse 28 of uh, Matthew 24, where it says, Whosoever, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. I've had uh, questions about that and been told so many different things. I would love to hear your... Oh, okay, yes. So, so where the carcass is, is, is where the eagles gather. So eagles... Uh, eagles don't eat dead dead food yeah okay so i tell you what let me do this i actually did a whole teaching on that one verse and it's called where the eagles gather okay. and uh, I'll, I'll inbox you a link that way i don't have to because it would take me about it talks about the house of israel so but i'll, I'll get it to you um, thank you email me and i'll respond right back to you thank you all right god bless you all right we are in the blending of the ages right now, the cusp of the curtains of time. 
When the ages changes, Yahshua says, that generation, not this generation, that generation will see the fulfillment of all things, the age of Aquarius. What is the age of Aquarius? What is the symbol of Aquarius? The man is pouring out what? Water. Water on the whole world. Mm Hell, -hmm. oh, hallelujah. What have I told you about the millennium reign? The Holy Spirit will be poured out on the whole world in this age of Aquarius. The millennial reign, the last great day. You see, I told you a while ago, I said, does it feel like everything is losing its structure, becoming more fluid? Well, fluid is the spirit of the age of Aquarius. And it's got a bad side and a good side. The bad side is all the structures are falling away. Everything's becoming intellectual, fluidity. But God's got a fluid ready. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read Matthew 28 and 20. According to the Bible, Yahshua shall not return until the end of the age of Pisces. Read. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Okay. Now listen carefully. Most of the time when you see the word world in your Bible, it's a flawed translation. It should say the end of the age. In the King James Bible, he says, I'm with you always until the end of the world, according to King James. But there is never going to be an end of the world. Quit saying that. Quit preaching that. Quit believing that. That's a demonic, that's demons telling you there'll be an end of the world. There will never be an end of the world. There will be an end of the age. <clears throat> so when you see that word world in your Bible, not every time, but most of the time, it's age. So Yahshua is telling them, I will be with you, talking about the Holy Spirit, until you don't need me no more. At the end of the age. Then... Then you and I will walk together again. I'll drink this cup with you in my father's kingdom in that age. Brother Cleophas, hallelujah. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Can you see these uh, Bibles I have on a picture? I see. Yeah, I see the big purple one. Yes, sir. Is that the one I need to get? Because that's it's like it? six hundred. It's six hundred dollars. Is that what they go for? Oh no 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 no. That's that's no 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 no. They're forty nine dollars. Okay, that's go good enough. To, Thank you. No no. Go to uh, 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 sister uh, Courtney. Would you take care of that for me? Send him the link. They're forty nine dollars. I think, brother. Thank you. Because I want to read the the translations where they're corrected. I appreciate that, you. That is, that's a good one. Yes, sir. Now let's go, let's go to Matthew 10 and 30. Now let me show you something very interesting. Matthew, I mean, sorry, not Matthew, Mark 10 and 30. Everyone turn there. Now that you understand the ages, you're going to understand these scriptures so much better. Mark 10 and 30. Who will not receive a hundredfold in this age, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. Oh. Read it again, because some people didn't get it. Who will not receive a hundredfold in this age? Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. Huh. Well, that sort of lines up with Pastor Vaughn's teachings about when we get set, when we get eternal life. 
When does eternal life come according to Mark 10 and 30? Not according to your mama, not according to your preacher, not according to your church. When does eternal life come to you according to Mark 10 and 30? In the age to come. In an age to come. Brother Joseph An Anakwich. Brother Shane, do you uh, do you read the Bashita as well? Do you read the Aramaic translation? I do. Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, I, sir. I, you're, so when they when they when the translation was done here that we've been reading for years, it comes from the Septuagint, right? Yes, well, yes, uh -huh. right. And Bashita would be more accurate as far as the Aramaic that was written when the Gospels were recorded, uh, whether it be Matthew or Mark. It would be more accurate than the Septuagint, Septuagint which was written in yeah. Greek, right? Yeah, the, Sep the Septuagint, I'm not a huge fan of. Me neither. Yes, sir. Good job. I want to ask all of you this question. This You've got to deal with this question. Because many of you have been told that you have eternal life right now. Now, listen. I've been holding off on one of my lessons for a long time with y'all. I wanted to try to get you to fall in love with me first. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm going to teach you all about born again one of these days. Because you ain't ready for it yet. Some of you ain't. But you better quit believing these lies that you've got eternal life. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. How many wants to hear born again? <laughs> all right okay i'll bring it to you as soon as i i feel feisty because that one's going to require a lot of time all right so eternal life is in the age to come what is the difference in kairos time and aeon time kairos is a fixed definite time but Aeon is a simple, more fluid period of time. It's really not fixed and it's not definite. It has no definite boundaries. That's called an age. That's why Yahshua said, no man knows the day or the hour of the end of the age. Most people don't realize they were asking two separate questions. What is the end of the age and the sign of your coming? Two separate events. Let's read Luke 170. As he spoke through the mouths of his holy ones, his prophets of the ages. Well, you're reading the correct translation. I'm sorry. In the King James Version, it says, uh, do you have, read it right there out of the King James or whatever, if somebody's got it. I want to show you the problem with those translations. Where's my King James? I don't even look at King James hardly. It's, it's Luke 170, right? Yeah. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. All right. According to that scripture, you know, since the world began, this has not been revealed to the prophets, but that word world is horrible. Since that age began, which was what? The Piscean age. If you believe, if you believe it the way it's written, none of the prophets knew. All right, let's go to Acts 3.21. Whom the heaven must retain until the time of the restoration of all things, about which Yahuwah spoke by the mouths of his holy prophets since the world began. Again, there's the problem. Yahweh <laughs> spoke about this since the age began. Now, I'm not going to worry about 1 Corinthians at this time. Now that we've looked at the scriptures to prove the transition of the ages, we're going to now look at the witness of the creation. We're going to look to nature to show us how these ages change and to help us understand 
the changes happening around us. Let's go to Ephesians 1 and 3. Now let me put it to you plainly. Each age has a symbol and a name that personifies the spirit of that age or the consciousness of that age, the mind of that age. Symbols speak when language fails. Let me ask all of you, no matter what language you speak, when you see a lion, what's the first word that pops in every human being's mind? Strength, fear, power. You don't need to know any language the symbol speaks. It's the same way with the Maserat. Every symbol speaks. Symbols never change. That's why the book of Revelation is written in symbols. Because no matter what language, a candlestick will always be a candlestick. Now, each age has a symbol of the spirit of that age. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be Yahweh, the father of our King, Yeshua Messiah, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings of the heavens in Messiah. The heavens. Is that right? Ephesians 1 and 3? Let's see. Wait, Ephesians 1 and 3. Was that right? You have. Let's see. We're missing something here. Give me one second. The course of this age is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Bear with me, folks. Sorry. Well, I've got my scripture wrong there. Bear with me. I'm looking. Okay, Ephesians 1 and 3. Let's see. Thus, as the age to come has come, we experience the blessings of Christ. Okay, read that again, Ephesians 1 and 3 for me. Is it 2 and 2? Ephesians 2 and 2. It says the course... Um, the course of this world, but it should yeah, be. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Read it for me. In which you walked, okay, I'm in Ephesians 2, verse okay. 2. Okay, thank in you. In which you walked in times past according to the course of this world. All right, that's what I'm looking for. Now, the word world is supposed to be what? Age. Age. Now, let's go back and look. There we go. All right. The course of this age. Now, if you go look up that word course of this age, this is talking about the course. What is the course? We're in the circle. That's the course. The age of Pisces, the spirit of this age. We are in a spirit. Every age has its own thoughts, ideas, values that influence the culture. The spirit of the age is the course of the age. It's a kind of growing consensus that morally lulls us to sleep, gradually causing us to accept society's latest values. Now go back and read verse 1 of Ephesians 2. The Apostle Paul calls this corrupting atmosphere the course of this world. Read. Two and one, you said? Yes, ma'am. One and yes. one through two again. Okay. Two, two, one through two. And to you who were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you walked in times past, According to the course of this age. Okay. You were walking in the spirit of the age. He said there is a spirit that everyone is walking in. 
And at one time, you were walking in that course. You were part of that zombie army. You were going with the flow of the age. But what did he say in verse 2? According to the prince of the power of the air, the God that is now at work in the children of disobedience. The God that is now at work in the children of disobedience. Who is working in everyone outside the house of Israel? The God of this world. And what is he working on them with? The spirit of the age. Open society. That's exactly right. There's a spirit of this age. Soros is behind. They're all, they're all lulling you into it. Read what John 17 and 15 says. Stay with me, folks. I'm getting you to the finish line. Can we answer any questions quick? Go right ahead. Brother Alvin Beal. I, I had no question. I don't. Did the hand come up? <laughs> yes, sir. All well, right. Sorry. sorry. Good, to, good to see the Beal family today. Sister Thank Callie you, sir. Sewell. Hi, Pastor Vaughn. Okay. Hello, darling. I'm going to ask. Ask this the best way possible because you know I grew up in Puerto Rico and we do this zodiac stuff like we follow that it's kind of like part of the culture. Okay. Okay. So I've been very careful. Like I don't want to get into all this new age and witchcraft. But um. Okay. So every two thousand years we are in an age that falls right. under Pisces, whatever. But every year we go through the story. That's what That's it correct. is. Correct. That's correct. So that's Yahweh reminding us what the story is. Right. In that and, and the ages remind us of the story. They're all on the same course. I didn't Don't know anything about the, this, so I'm trying take, to. Take that word course and remember, course means circle. Okay. Everybody write that down. Course is a circle. Okay. And, and I just have this quick question because I have oh, yeah. heard that, that pronunciation that Rose is, um, Rosie is using. Yahuwah is another way of saying Yahweh or I'm, I'm not sure. I'm uh, just... there, there, there's a group of people that, that uses Yahuwah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, there's nothing. Okay, gotcha. I just, okay. It, yeah. it was just confusing. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Everyone remember, we're running the course, the circle. The circle's the same. Why do we keep the holy days every year? The circle repeats. Every year the clock is ticking. And for those that don't keep the holy days, they're under the course of this world. What is that? Christmas, Easter, New Year's, Valentine, Maypole, Mayflower, May. That's all another course. That's another circle. Did anybody get that? That's another circle. Halloween. That's, a, that's telling a story. Don't get me started. Go read my life. That's a story about... Anyway. Never mind. That's another circle. Get out of that circle. That course of this age. Come over to the circle that's telling the truth. It starts over March the 23rd, New Year's, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, last great day. And then it'll start over again next year. The course of this world is not the course of God. John 17, 15. I do not pray that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. I don't want you to take my people out of this world. I want you to protect them from the course of this world. Hallelujah. We're not moving over onto a compound and escaping from the world. 
He said, but Father, protect them from the spirit of this age. Give them a different mind. Put them on a different course. Take them out of Sunday worship. Put them into Sabbath worship. Take them out of Halloween. Take them out of the lie of this world. Hallelujah. And put them on a different course. Put them in a different circle. That's why he gave us his word to permeate our thinking so that we don't become conformed to the circle that the rest of the world is running in like rats. Hallelujah. Get out of that rat circle. Woo, Shedabaha. Get out of that circle, darling. And come on over to the winning side. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, wholly acceptable in Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed. Do not. Do not. Allow the spirit of this age. To turn you into children of this age. Woo! You're going to fight like, you know what? To stay out of that circle of death. Read. To the pattern of this world. Now, hold on. That's, see, that, see what I'm telling y'all? You Not world, age. Age, age. Don't be conformed to Pisces or Aquarius. Read. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to test and prove what is the righteous and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Come out of that circle so you can know the perfect will. The, the, somebody, I saw a wheel just then, a circle. Hallelujah. It's time to get in the perfect wheel. <laughs> get in that perfect wheel of Yahweh by not allowing the spirit of the, what spirit of this age? Oh, the one that says, I don't need to submit to nobody. I'm my own man. Maybe that's the spirit of this age. That one that says, I'm a self-made man. That's the spirit. You better, you better get that junk out of your head. You better come into the right, perfect wheel of Yahweh. There's the wheel in the middle of this big old wheel called the world. You better get in the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Woo, glory to God. Oh, I see a wheel in the middle. How many is glad you're not on that big wheel? How many is glad you're in that wheel in the middle of the wheel? Woo, shay. Oh, blessed be the name of Yahweh. I read Ephesians 5 and 8. Let's do this. Woo. For you were once darkness, but now you are light as Yahweh. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Get off of that wheel. Galatians 5, 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Walk in the wheel. Get in the right wheel. Ephesians 5 and 2. 2. Oh, 5 and 2. And walk in love as the Messiah has also loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to Yahweh as a sweet smelling aroma. Get in that wheel of love, real love. Come out of that Pisces and that Aquarius spirit where it's all about me. Get out of that wheel. Get out of that wheel where it's me and my four and no more. Love your brother. Love your enemy. That wheel of, of Aquarius, they love themselves. The Bible said they'd be lovers of self more than lovers of God. They won't go to the church on the Sabbath day. 
but they'll go to the casino. They love their self. Get out of that wheel. Somebody say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Somebody say, I'm coming out I'm of coming the out. spirit of this age. Hallelujah. Oh, 3 John, verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Ah, that's how I feel when I see 134 of you today that's coming out of that big wheel, getting in that little wheel. I rejoice. My heart rejoices. I'm struggling to breathe and get my voice out right now. But there's a fire burning in me right now to see you walking in this other wheel coming out of that spirit that's in the air all around you. Hate, racism. I've never spent, I, I've never, God is my living witness. I've never had a moment of racism in my heart. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost since I was four years old. <laughs> Let me tell you something, honey. I'll slap my lips on the cheek of a black woman as soon as I will a white woman, black man, white man. Y'all don't understand. You, I'm in another wheel. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about, well, like Sister Dot. She knows what I'm talking about. I, I love and hug and kiss. I, I, I've never seen a color in my life. Why? I'm in another wheel. You're not going to drag me into that big wheel where, where I got to hate somebody because of what color they are. I don't, I, I've told y'all I don't hate Joe Biden. I've told you it ain't even Joe Biden in that office. That Soros and Satan. That, I, I don't hate nobody. And I'm not going to get caught up in the spirit that's even in this conservative movement turning people against one another. Y'all better get out of that junk. You better get in this real wheel, this wheel of love, where we love those that hate us. Woo, say hey. Oh, stand for truth, but do it with love. Amen. Colossians 2 and 6, and I'm going to get out of y'all's way today. Therefore, just as you have received Yeshua Messiah, our head, so walk as he walked. As we walk in God's power and spend time in his word, he gives us the strength to live in this other wheel and not the spirit of the age. Now, nine is the final number. There's no number greater than nine. Zero is not a number. There's only nine numbers in the whole world, one through nine. Each age lasts approximately 2,160 years. Now, the total of those numbers, interestingly enough, is nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. Zero is not a number, which is the number of finality. It is the end of the numbers. Most astronomers, not astrologers, astronomers believe that this age that we've been living in began around 200 AD or zero to 200 AD. Why the uncertainty? Because of the cusping of the ages. They flow into one another. They do not begin and end on a certain hour. They connect. And as such, the first coming of Messiah happened during the cusp of the last age. And remember, Paul speaks of this age and the next age. Each age brings a change to the collective consciousness of those living in that age. That's called the course of the age or the spirit of the age. The mindset of that age. And this brings us back to the question that we began our study with. Why is everything changing? Because Piscean to Aquarian are totally opposite ages. You and I as believers have a command not to accept 
this mindset of the age, but we are to be rather in the mindset of the kingdom. This is a challenge to us all that only the Holy Spirit can help us do. The age that we are leaving, Pisces, is an age of law and order. Stay with me now, and I'm almost done. The spirit of the age of Pisces was structure, law and order. It was an emotional age and a sacrificing age. Institutions. Why do you think the Roman Catholic Church survived those 2,000 years and now it's falling apart? Do you think they just started molesting boys? You think it just started happening? No. You don't think it wasn't happening 2,000 years ago? But why all of a sudden is that institution crumbling? What about the royal families of Europe? For 2,000 years, they sat on thrones <clears throat> because it was an age of institutions. Defund the police. Have you heard of defund the police? You would have never heard defund the police in the age of Pisces. Why? Structure, order, law and order. That's a word we would have never, when I was a kid, I would have never dreamed about defund the police. There was a different age. Pisces was enterprise and business. Where do you think all of the great successes of the world over the last, the industrial age? All This was all part of Pisces. People went to work. They took pride in work. Industry, business, everybody wore a business suit. It was an age of boundaries, borders. I'm fixing to teach you why people hate Donald Trump. It's a spiritual thing. Woo! <laughs> borders. In the last 2,000 years, borders was the spirit of the age. Structure. And when Donald Trump landed in the middle of a, or the beginning of Aquarius, speaking about structure, borders, he was preaching the opposite message of the spirit of this age. That's why God called y'all to a man you didn't even like, because he was speaking of structure. Rebuild our military. Honey, that's stuff from the last age. Now we've got the new agers where let's just all live in harmony and peace. Kumbaya. I'll smoke your weed, you smoke mine. We don't need no more guns. Let's bring all our guns to City Park and let's do a bonfire and burn them all up. Who needs guns anymore? I'm showing you, folks, please, I'm showing you the change we're going through. The age is changing from structure and walls and borders to water. Somebody say water. Aquarius is watery. The sign of Aquarius is water. Water has no boundaries. That's why men wear dresses now. There's no boundaries, no structure. That's why a family is two mamas and a dog now. The structure doesn't exist and we're crossing into the age. And honey, it's just getting started. We're cusping. The ages are cusping right now. We still got a little Pisces left. I need everybody to hear me about the spirit. I beg you. You're going to see, you're going to see Donald Trump's face right now. We've got a little Pisces left, structure and order, legitimate elections, law that controls how you vote, structure, Pisces, institutions, the Senate, the House. But now we've got the fluid people. 
that's operating under this new age that's coming in. No law. Don't tell people they need to be legal to vote. Just let her, just my, let's just let's just tear down the walls. And here came Donald Trump in the middle of this cusping. Have you? Do you really? There was never a president hated like this man was. Why? He was interrupting the ages. My God, I hope you're hearing me. It wasn't about a man. It was about a message. Make America great again. Under Aquarius, no nation is great. We're all the brotherhood of mankind. Folks, I plead with you to hear, we've been in a spiritual battle. That's why you're worn out. This has been spiritual. You're getting more revelation right now. You're finally understanding why you, why you feel like you feel. This has been a battle of the ages. That's why God called you to it. That's why. What is the difference in Pisces and Aquarius? Aquarius is an intellectual age. You don't believe me? Look. It's a technology age. Not hard work. Pisces was hard work. Pisces was structure. Your majesty. You know what this age says? In the last age, when you saw the queen, you bowed, you curtsied. You know what this age says? Oh, well, nobody. In the last age, when you saw the blue lights come on, there was some structure that said, yes, sir, where do you want me to stand? You want me to lay on top of the car? You want me to, where, where do you want me, sir? What does this age say? Why'd you, why'd you pull me over? I, I, did you understand? There's a rebellion brewing that comes with the spirit of this age. It's intellectual. It's all about the intellect. No more boundaries and no structure. We see it in the new clothing. Just go look at how people's dressing. You'll see the new age. You ever heard that phrase, the new age? We're here. There was a song when I was a child, y'all may have never heard it, but it, it went something like this. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter lines with Mars. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Love will guide the stars. And love will guide the stars. Yeah. You remember that? That yeah. was talking about the new age that was coming. And we're there now. Don't preach hard, Brother Vaughn. Love people. <laughs> Bunch of dummies. Don't preach so rough. I know it's too Piscean for you, isn't it? Structure, order. Pull your pants up behind your crack. <laughs> Pull your sweatpants up, uh, hanging under your butt like you want somebody to pull them down. Structure. It's gone. It's leaving. Now, why am I preaching this today? Because you have a job to protect yourself from this change, to protect yourself from the course of this age, from the spirit of this age. You have a job, Sister Sandra. Your hands up, Sister Sandra. Can you hear me? I can. Uh, while you were teaching about this worldly circle, the Lord gave me this picture of uh, the bottomless pit and all of this fluid is flowing into it. I get it. I saw it. I just saw it. The fluid. Wow. This fluidity. That I see it, Sister Sandra. You know what? I see it. I see it flowing to that bottomless pit. Brother Alvin Beal. 
unmute yourself, Brother Bill. Pastor, I don't know what's going on, but for some reason it keeps showing a hand. But oh, I, okay. I, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just loving what you're doing. I got no questions but to keep on teaching me, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Bill. Unmute yourself, Brother Bill. Pastor, I don't know what's going on, but for some reason it keeps showing a hand. But oh, I, okay. I, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just loving what you're doing. I got no questions but to keep on teaching me, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Bill. I hope to meet you one of these days. Well, we, we dear, have one. We'll be down there to see you again. We, we were with good. you at, at uh, D.C. on the 6th of January. You might oh, recall. wonderful. <laughs> you got All right. Pair, Are, you got a pair of gloves that day? Yes, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. God yeah, bless that, you. That was that was <laughs> I, our dear sister says iPhone. I don't see a name. Bless you. Hi. Hello, darling. I want I wanted to know since you said like we're um, going through the ages of the Aquarius, what are the prayers that we can say to protect us and our family? Excellent. Number let me tell you that is a great question. What is your name, sweetheart? Uh Sandra Gellin. Sister Sandra, the main spirit that you need protection from right now, two of them, is rebellion and deception. You must pray. I'll give you an example. In this age, nobody needs a teacher. I don't need nobody teaching me. That's a spirit of rebellion. You must pray against rebellion and deception in your life and in your home. And then you pray for the Father to help you build your structures, your walls, your standards, what you will accept, what you won't accept, and, and you, your family sets your standards. We will never miss the Sabbath. We will never miss the holy days. We will never hate our enemies. You set your standard and don't let the water of this age creep in and flood your life. Gotcha. Gotcha. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Stay with us, darling. We're glad to have you here tonight. Appreciate it. Now, let me show you as I close out, everyone. Right here, if you'll look to your left, around 2012 is when we begin to cusp from Pisces. There's Pisces right below it. 3 BC to 27 AD is when that one started. Now, you go 2,100 years later, and in 2012, we begin the cusp, not the change. This will take a period of time to around 2090, if you will, for this entire cusping to be complete. And then you'll be straight in the age of Aquarius. Now, Yahshua will return after the changing of the age. Now, that could happen tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, because the ages are changing now. So don't let those dates fool you. But I want you to notice on this clock, what is the polar opposite of Aquarius? Look across, you see Leo the lion. Why? Because the age of Aquarius is mirrored. If you'll take that clock in half, it is a mirror of one another. What you have on the left is the evil influence of the age, the fluidity. What you have on the right is the good influence of the age. It is when Yahshua will return as the conquering lion, and he will pour out his spirit on all flesh during this next age that we are in now, or we're entering in the millennial reign. Why do you think all of a sudden, you're hearing a message about the millennial reign that you never heard before because Yahweh's preparing you. The change is here. The time is now. Sister Dot? I was, I uh, want to speak on the bottomless pit that just Sandra just brought up. Yes. And I was remembering that over in Switzerland, they are digging, uh, this is called CERN, where they are digging, trying to reach 
the devil himself. Yes, ma'am. I think I read about that. Yes. It's the bottom. They're not going to not gonna have to dig too far because we there. We are there, Sister Dot. I miss you. I'm so glad to see you today. Can't wait to see you again, darling. Sister Rhonda, Sister Rhonda Connor, go ahead, folks. If you have questions, get in line, and I'm going to start answering some questions. Um, I was curious about the um, question that you asked us last week to ask five people oh, yes. that we knew we were Christians. Yeah, what's some of the and results of that? I sent you an email, but my, uh, nobody knows. I mean, I heard yeah, everything. Right. One one person looked up the scripture and quoted it to me, but most of them were we're gonna we're gonna praise God, we're gonna worship God, and um, we're gonna live a life of leisure and happiness. You know I what, Rhonda? I, you. I love the Lord. I don't know if anybody that loves the Lord more than I do, but I don't relish the idea of standing and singing hallelujah for a trillion years nonstop, okay? Me either. And that, you know, that was one thing when I was a child and I was in church and they talk about when we get to heaven, we're going to sing and worship God forever and ever. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that forever and ever. And Not you know, I'm, Sister, Sister God, Rhonda, yes. think, let, let's just think about that, Sister Rhonda. What kind of God needs that in other words yes. <laughs> i mean you cre you want us to just stand around the throne and just look at you and just go holy 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 i mean as long as is that do you need that no ladies and gentlemen he created you for a purpose to be just like him so that y'all so together we can do the work that he wants us to do amen sister Rhonda. if anybody else is in class, and you did your homework last week, I'd like to hear some of your results. Amen. So Brother Marlon Hoover, welcome. Welcome, Pastor Shane. How are you? I'm blessed, my friend. Um, the, the lady that was talking about the pick, it just brought up a thing that I had a few years ago. Um, I, I saw the earth. And every second I saw somebody falling into the pits of hell. And, and it's not a physical hell because there is no hell, but it was a pit where um, people were, were, were dead, that they were so far from God that they were just falling in. And I saw this. It was every second somebody was just falling. Yep. That's that zombie army, Brother Marlin, that Yahweh showed me. And it's those people that are in the spirit of this age. They're angry. Don't even know why they're angry. I mean, you know, I've been alive a long time. How many of y'all remember? I, I mean, maybe I, how many of y'all remember when the races got along just fine? Yep. Yes. I mean, we all, I mean, we, you know, helped one another. I mean, we didn't hate one another. I mean, this spirit has come from the pits of hell over this age. And they're falling into it, Brother Marlin. Yep. They're just fall they're thought, falling. Yep. I've uh <clears throat> we we've heard so much about uh th th this I don't want to say idiot, but he really is. Um as as the fake president on how they're trying to break up the races oh i know it. I, it's war i've talked to so many of um of the the black culture and i i told them i said you know you weren't supposed to do that and they're like what do you mean i said you're not supposed to hold the door open for me and and, and vice versa i said you know according to this government we're supposed to hate one another okay and the responses that i get from that, that uh, the black community is that they're so fed up with what's they going are. on that you're going to have bad no matter what race you are. But they are fact. being pointed. They're being um, uh, pointed out, or I don't know if that's the word I'm uh, looking for. But we're we're being 
we're, we're, we're being separated to, to not to come together, to, to have this anger, to hate one another, to bring so much violence. And, and they agree with me, we're, we're just fed up with it. That if Amen. I can't go and talk to somebody else, uh, no matter what uh, skin color they have or what uh, ethnic background they have, then what, what's the sense in even, even going out into the world? Why am I just stay yeah. inside? And that's where they're pushing us at. You're right. It's the spirit of the age, Brother Marlon. And I, for one, refuse to get in that circle. I'm going to stay yeah, right too. in here in this house of Israel. Hallelujah. And love one another. Love yes. my enemies. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise, praise God. Amen. Sister Shelly Todd, welcome. Glad you could make it today. Oh, I lost Sister Shelly. Sister Holly, I know you. I'll be I'm right here. back to you, Shelly. Hi, okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sister Shelly, go ahead. Oh, um, hi. I was trying to get in before and I was having problems with unmuting. Um, this is my first time. Welcome. Um, the question I have is about back where it talks about the unforgivable sin in this uh -huh. age and the next. What exactly is that? Great question. I have taught on the unpardonable sin. Um, if Let me just... Uh, it's a long answer, and I, so let me oh. just put it. I, no, I'll send you a link to the full answer. Okay. But you are not able to commit that sin today. All right. So um, okay. that was only for the Pharisees of Jesus's day uh -huh. and the people that knew better and that were attributing his works as demonic work. And so, um, but I, I'll send you a link to that video I did. Okay, and um, with the thing with the with the the zodiac and um, that's the Maseroth. You're talking, yeah. The, um, if your first like sign is under, it's like right. I'm Gemini. Um, is that anything? No, no, because remember, you may have been born under Gemini. But you were re, you were rebirthed, you were reconceived under the okay. sign of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The sign okay. of the word of God. Now, those negative things from Gemini may mm -hmm. try to pressure you all your life. But remember, yeah. you're no longer a child of your mother and father. You're now a child of Yahweh conceived by the seed of the Holy Spirit. And that sign is what's influencing your life, your new life in Christ right now. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Um, Amen. I'm Amen. Sister Holly. You? Unmute yourself, Holly. I did. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good morning, Pastor Vaughn. Wonderful. Good to see you, Thanks. darling. Good to see you. This is a... Uh... But Holly, unmute. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I was just wondering, like, we're going into Aquarius, correct? So if I yes. was, if I'm correct with your teaching, are you saying like this age that we're going into, the rebellion and everything, um, it is possible that Leo, the line of tribe of Judah, Jesus, can come back during this time and save us all from all this craziness oh, we're yeah. going to go through? Well, well, he is. Remember the question the disciples asked? Show us the sign. Tell it when will be the end of the age okay. and yes. the sign of your coming. Okay? okay. So he told them, my, I would, no man knows the day or the hour when the age is going to wow. end. Okay. But my coming will happen when that happens. Well, that is happening as we speak. We're wow. in the cusping. All right. Yes. Now, can I tell you when that cusping is over with? It may be over now. I don't know. Right. If you'll study astronomy, no astronomer knows. They say it lasts a period of time for that. That's why you still got some of us that loves law and order. Mm -hmm. We still fight for the police. 
Yes. You got the other half that hate the police. We never had people hate the police, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. you had criminals, but not the society. So we're in the mixture right now, Sister Holly. But the good news, Yahshua will return. The, now, why must he return? Because in that fluidity yes. is where World War III is going to come out of. Right. All right. China and Russia is already joining together. Right. The old structure is being torn down. What was the old structure? You kept China and Russia apart. Okay. So they didn't join against us. But now that old wall is coming down. The, all the nations are, are realigning. There's this fluid thing going on. Yes. Yeshua must return to save this planet well, from, our yeah. own, from our own fluidity. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Love you, Sister Holly. I appreciate your support. Yes, love um, you. I got your tithe the other day. Yahweh bless you. Sister Renee from Virginia. Sister Renee, unmute. Hear me now? Now I can hear you. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I was a little confused on the actual question because I didn't get it written down from last week. I know okay. that I was having a a rough day uh, one I day remember this week, that. and I went to a friend's house. I, she's a believer. She's not a Saturday worshiper, but I, I knew right. she had a strong faith, and we've right. been friends for a long time. Yes, and um, some things that she was saying led me to leave with her the Dream Team book. Oh, wow. Of yours. I've got to order another one for myself because I had not, I'm not anywhere, any, but I'm kind of just sitting back waiting to be able to follow up and see if she's opened it. Um, it seems to have opened a door where she's sending me anything she can from Charles Stanley. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Uncle Charles, I call And, him. you know, can we still glean because God has opened our eyes and our ears. Can we still glean truths from yes. people like Pastor Stanley? Believe it or not, we can, but I don't, I don't recommend it for those that cannot discern. Okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. When my wife needs a little motivation, a little get up and go, a little something to, you know, get her going, she will sneak over and listen to a little Joyce Myers. And Joyce will get her all encouraged. And then the moment Joyce says something that's anti-word, my wife will cut her off because she's, no, I'm good. Well, I, my I, point I'm making is, we can glean from anybody if we can discern the lies. But for a weak Christian, I would highly recommend they stay with this message as much as they can. Sure. But you can definitely glean. We love all of our brothers. We love all of our sisters. My grandmother is one of the greatest Christians I've ever known. And yet she doesn't understand these things. Okay. But when I'm listening to even my grandmother, I'll cut it off when I know it's going against the revealed word of God for my day, for well, my hour. I started reading your booklet, your digital booklet on Born Again. Uh -oh. And it's interesting how many light bulbs started going off yep. when I heard Pastor Stanley start talking about heaven. Okay. And it's like, Anyway, I, I, right. I, I wish there were more of you or closer by that <laughs> let's, you're, you're, you know, it's, you're well, not why available. Don't we all pray? <laughs> let's pray for the father to raise men up that will take this message and, and go with it. I listen <clears throat> very soon. I will not be at my church very much. I can tell you because 
My church is going to become a headquarters church, but I'm going to be going out establishing churches across the United States, wherever we can get at least 20 or 30 people that's hearing the message. I'll come there and teach for a whole weekend and, you know, leave my church because we've got ministers here that's heard my message long enough. They can preach it now. So my church will soon be ready for me to go and them to take over. And so that's what I'm looking forward to. Thank you. Amen. Brother Christopher Agwan, God bless you. Hello, Pastor. Um, can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. I just wanted to remind everyone here, especially for the ones that are, are this is, you know, you're new here. Uh, we do have a Bible study uh, website that you can uh, go back and watch the previous uh, Bible studies. And also this will be uploaded uh, once it's uh, completed and edited. But I do encourage uh, everyone also to get on the Telegram uh, group. And if you watch the videos and you have questions, put those questions on the Telegram group. Yes, I can um, read that. You know, that, so that way, you know, everyone here has that platform uh, instead of, uh, of, of just waiting for a Saturday Bible study uh, to ask your questions. You know, that's, that, that's the purpose of that platform. Uh, so that way we can have that uh, video and any teachings that, uh, that is on there and then put out your questions. So, you know, uh, it can be answered or at least have a uh, uh, preparation for you for the next Bible study. So I just wanted Very to put that out. Very good. And also everyone watching me, I, I don't want to lay this on you, but you are commanded to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, Passover, and Pentecost. It's not a suggestion. It is a command. If you, you need to go ahead and start planning your year around that circle every year. Uh, you need to register for the Feast of Tabernacles in October. You need to be there. Now, let me tell y'all a secret that I'm not telling the whole world. But this year will be much more focused on the Feast of Tabernacles part. You know, last year was very political and I had to do that for a reason. But this year, I expect several hundred of you will be there for Tabernacles. And we will be doing much more in that vein and in that teaching. So um, it's going to be wonderful. All right, Sister Jan Meadows and Mama. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. This is well, so now, life changing. Is Jan? You or Mama? Yeah, which my mom. I'm the mom. Okay. Jan. okay. <laughs> this is Aaron. I'm Aaron. <laughs> hey, Jan and Aaron. This is Where are y'all so from again? Uh, right outside of Austin, Texas. Yes. Oh, God, y'all are in a liberal area. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fluid. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. <laughs> but we live out in the country, so. Yes. Well, the good. <laughs> um, I uh, just had a really quick question, kind of in this transition time that we're in, in this change yes. of the age. Yes. Um, as we're uh, moving to the time when Jesus is coming back, I've just been having this um, thought in my mind of the overcomers ruling in the next age with Jesus. Yes. Who are we going to be ruling over if the Wonderful. other saints are still in the grave, um, right. if I'm understanding That's some, right. of, some of the teachings, what are we, I know it's the, the nations, but who are those people? Well, I can tell, hold on, I can <laughs> tell that little Aaron has not read the dream team. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's in there. We do have ah! it. <laughs> so we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. <laughs> so uh, those questions I answer in detail. Okay. in the dream team and it's a phenomenal question let i tell you what i'm going to make it real easy for everybody let's imagine let's just imagine that right now today yashua returns okay do you want to give you a brainstorm and just blow your mind yeah <laughs> if he returned today not much would change if he returned right now of course, that the whole, you know, it would be dramatic. The whole world would see it. But 
everybody would go to sleep tonight and wake back up tomorrow. Life would go on. Babies would be born. People would die. There would just be a new government over in Jerusalem ruling the whole world. Mm. That government would go to work changing everything. Interesting. It's very interesting. That's mm -hmm. what people don't understand. That's why I tell people, nobody in your church knows what they're going to do in the millennium. Because in their minds, we die, we wake up, we float off to heaven, and nothing could be further from the truth. If you're dead in the grave when Yahshua returns, if you're lucky enough to come up, you are assigned your city, your town. Aaron, you'll be assigned your area where you'll become a teacher of the law of God to... Let me, I tell you what, let's do it this way because it's a great question. <laughs> Imagine today that the Chinese government is going to take over America. They've, they've, they've got the missiles. They, we know they've got it. We surrender. We are now occupied by the Chinese government. Can I tell you something? Nothing would really change. There would be no... You would still have dinner that evening. You would still cook for your family. You would still go to bed. You would still wake up and take a shower. Life would go on. But gradually, you would become more and more Chinese in your thinking, mm -hmm. in your food, in your dress. Why? They would begin re-educate. You ever heard of re-education camps? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh. Yahshua is going to have a great re-education camp. Yes. <laughs> and it's got to have teachers that's going to re-educate the world. Now, every government is established on a law. The Chinese have their law. America has ours. Yahshua has his. The only problem is his church teaches there is no more law. Mm. So therefore, everybody that's supposed to rule and reign with him and teach the law, have no idea about the law. Yeah. So who's going to teach? <laughs> the 144,000. <laughs> Those that come up in the first resurrection. Everyone in that first resurrection are law keepers, I promise you, because they've got to become law teachers. Mm -hmm. You know who's coming up in that first resurrection? King David. Mm -hmm. He will yeah. sit once again on the throne of Israel. Mm -hmm. Very so cool. guess, <laughs> guess, guess who else is coming up the 12 apostles they will all sit on a throne over each of the mm -hmm. tribes of Israel mm -hmm. and, and, and guess who else is coming up Elijah, Daniel no they're all coming to help Yahshua teach the law of Yahweh to every city Austin, Texas, everywhere but the only difference is that Satan will be bound and deception will leave our planet and the Holy Spirit will be poured on every human being and everyone will be willing to learn the law of God. Somebody has to teach them. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> what a job we have waiting for us. Yes, we do. <laughs> and yet everybody wants to send us to heaven to sing holy, holy, holy all day. Mm. You know, folks, this is why God has raised me up. And that's why he's brought this 130 people here today, because this message has got to get out. Do you know Yahshua does not return until this gospel of the kingdom is preached to the whole world? Now, the gospel has been preached to the whole world, and yet Jesus didn't come back because that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said the gospel of the kingdom must be preached to the whole world. That gospel began to be preached about 20 years ago, and it's being preached to you right now. To, where this gospel of the coming kingdom is being preached finally. After 2,000 years. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Keith. 
Good. Uh, well, it's afternoon here. Good afternoon, Pastor. Um, I asked this question just because I, I have your ear. We were on the website for um, the Yahweh translation of the Bible, the book of Yahweh. And I was looking through some of the other materials and I stumbled across one of the books on there. And if I'm opening a can of worms for a discussion for another day, that's fine. You don't have to answer the question. But there was a book about, I think it was titled The Truth About Satan. Are you familiar? I'm sure anybody that's been to that website must be. I'm very I'm very familiar and I know where you're going. Um, we, we deal with it. I've dealt with it several times. I'll, I'll deal with it again. Number one, just because I recommend a, a book from a ministry does not mean I endorse that ministry or everything that they say, say, but it doesn't take away from their collegiate work in the translation of the Bible. Now, with that said, you're probably referring to the fact that Satan is referred to as a she. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. We get that every day here. So let me put it to you like this. If anyone has ever studied the Spanish language or the Italian language or the French language, it's not like English. They have feminine and masculine words. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. In Spanish... If I say uh, a word that ends with an O, that's the masculine form. If it ends with an A, that's the feminine form. So if I'm going to translate that word true to the original language, I must use a pronoun that is fitting to the femininity or the masculinity of the word. In Hebrew, it's the same way. Satan, hashatan, that is... That word comes from a feminine Hebrew word. So the only way to refer to that word properly is with the feminine pronoun she. Wow. Okay. And it, it went into some other things, but is it a situation of, you know. It's a, it's a covenant relationship. At one time, Satan was in a covenant relationship with Yahweh. Anyone in that relationship with Yahweh is always in the feminine role. For example, Israel was his what? Wife. Because she was in a covenant relationship with him. Satan is neither male nor female. We all know that. Yahweh is neither male nor female. So we have to look beyond the sex and see the femininity of the role. Okay. You open so, that up for me. Thank you. I, I hope so. Many people get thrown off by that. But yeah. Satan, was in, so, Satan was in a feminine role. I get it. I, I understand. Yeah, it was a little mind-blowing, you know, because know. being under your teaching is your head spins <laughs> your head spins. every week it's something new and it's just it's it's journey that we've been on i personally been on since 2005 i asked wow i asked, lord show me who you are who you yeah. say you are not who they say you are i don't know where that prayer came from and this is the journey that we've been on and i found my beautiful bride and she is so on the same page and and uh we found you together and we're just we love you pastor <laughs> i love you right okay. back darling what is your name laura i can't wait to meet you on passover oh my word y'all are coming too my <laughs> word i'm I've gonna heard... have to go rent i'm gonna have to go rent a stadium no we got people Airbnbs. we got one of the rooms yeah we've already booked courtney already got us booked good you pray Court for us Courtney is priceless, isn't she? She is. I she love is. Courtney. You, you I appreciate for Courtney. Because we had COVID. I'm still struggling pretty bad. Yeah, she's oh. taking a while to get through it's it. This hurting, is about three weeks. It's hurting to breathe. For her. I know, darling. I'm right there with you. We will continue to pray for you, okay? Thank, Thank you, you, Pastor. You're Thank welcome. You. God I bless you. you. Thank you, darling. Sister Dot. From Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you, Pastor. 
I just want to make sure you still going to have Passover, uh, Passover at your church or did you relocate? That's still up in the air. So at, at this point, it's going to be at the church. It could be at the country club. And as this thing grows, I may have to move it again, but I'll, I'll let everyone know exactly. It will be here in our area. You know, you know we, we're not going to leave the city or at least the vicinity. All right. I just want the book. We're, we're coming too, we'll Pastor Vaughn. Good. Who is that? Connie Baum in August. We're coming. Oh, we'll good, there. darling. I can't wait. Look I at y'all. We got some baptisms to take care of. You got to baptize. Oh. We're probably going to be baptizing another hundred people. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. We'll be in that crowd. <laughs> Brother Joshua Feliciano. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Hi, this is Mrs. Feliciano. Look um, at him under a blanket over there. I yeah, see him all relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually wanted to thank you um, for helping us to get out there for Passover. Um, we're really excited. I wanted to share a small portion of my testimony. I don't have a question, but um, I wanted yeah. to share part of my testimony and, and to thank you basically for being a part of that. Um, about eight years ago, before me and Joshua got married, um, I had actually been living. I was a single mom at the time and I was living with my boss. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, she was helping me out. And in that time, I had found out that the person I was living with was a witch a self-professed witch and um it's not that we called her that it's that she literally told sure. us she was a witch and um I didn't I didn't realize that at the time I had a lot of um problems going on in my life and um I didn't understand that that had some direct correlation to it um and at the office where we were working at I was a social worker and I was thinking that I was doing a good thing I was working helping uh the LGBTQ community um, we had a transitional living program and um, I was one of like the intake workers. So as the young people would come to me and talk to me about how they came to, you know, be out on the streets, I would have to help place them into uh, a living situation. Um, yes. And so what, what would happen was at night, I would get called into the building whenever there was problems. And um on many occasions, they would call me in the middle of the night, two, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and I would walk over to the building and it would be like, like all hell broke loose in that building. And it was always, they would always attack me. And um, I didn't really understand why I, my, my life was just like so out of control that one day I came home and I remember like dropping to my knees and crying out to the Lord and saying, Father, what am I doing wrong? Like, why is it if I think that I'm doing the right thing, I think I'm being a good person, trying to help other people, why is my life going this way? And um, everything just started to become revealed to me right away, starting with that witch came home and she manifested into a demon. And I had to like, it was crazy for me because I didn't expect right. that I had to actually battle that demon. And it was the demon of rebellion, just like like how you're talking about. And yes. the irony is that um today you were talking about that song, um the age of Aquarius. Yeah, she used to she used to hum that song all the time, and it was wow. kind of like eerie to me because she would hum that song and she would sing it and she would cackle, and I would always be like, why are you always singing that song? Mm -hmm. But you know, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. And so what happened? Fla flash forward. Um, after I prayed. And I asked God to reveal everything to me. Like two days later, three days later, Joshua walks into my office building. Now, I knew Joshua from my teenage years. So we immediately got back, you know, together and started to talk. Right. And from there, our we got together and our family right. came to happen. Now, moving forward into the future, I have prayed through all of this situation to ask the Lord to help bring my mom in so that she could understand the things of the Lord. And now my mom is starting to come to the Lord. So my mom actually is part of the, the church and everything. And she wants to get baptized with us. Hallelujah. Um, and then, and then um, we started going to church. Joshua and I were going to church and we were serving in the music ministry. We were leading the music ministry. And um, what ended up happening as we started to like learn the real truth right. and come to our pastors with it, they kind of cut us off from being able to do that. So... 
We are pastor. You're our, you're basically our new pastor. I and love we it. worship, we lead the music ministry at home. Um and, and so what ended up happening is that you know we we were trying to find a place. So God just brought you to us at the perfect time when we were kind of in despair. And the things are so lined up that uh, we wonder sometimes if like you could hear what we're saying because <laughs> we'll be talking. Yeah, we'll be talking about something. Joshua will be telling me something. And like not 10, 20 minutes later, we'll put you on and you'll be saying the same thing. So wow. it's like a confirmation. And so I think I tell him all the time. I think that you and him are going to be like the best of friends because you I guys love it. so much alike that I we're like lined it. up. It's beautiful. And I... That, I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. And um, I can't wait till we get out there for Passover and we're able to meet everybody. But I feel oh. like we're definitely where we belong. Oh, I tell you what, my heart rejoices, darling. Thank you for that powerful testimony. And, you know, I feel I just felt the presence of the Lord so much when you were talking. God is connecting all of us supernaturally by his spirit. It's a, it's a work that none of us are doing. It is his work. And he is just bringing it together by his spirit. And oh, I just, God bless you. I can't wait to meet you at Passover. And then another dear sister, Sister Jill Sidock. I hope that every one of you are ordering our ministry t-shirts from her website. They're beautiful. If not, go get you one. It says First Harvest Ministries and wear it around and be identified with this message. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I Hallelujah. feel the Holy Ghost. They can find go those ahead. on your, your chaps and um, that website. What is it again? What is it now? <laughs> my website's uh, connected to your website. For oh, chaps my website it. is uh, ta uh Toto's Army of Patriots. Not yeah, that. they can find it on there too. But anyway, I have a question. First of all, that was a beautiful testimony. And we feel the same way. We were three years without a pastor because couldn't find anybody. But anyway, um, I have a question because there's some people out there in the Hebrew Roots movement who call the Holy Spirit a she and like the mother. Right. And I wanted your, under, I want some right. understanding because I didn't know if that was, that was confusing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that. Uh, I, I've, there, there. If listen, if, we have to be very careful. There is in this new age of Aquarius, there is a strong spirit of femininity. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to be very careful. It's amazing to me how the church will teach you everything about Jesus and Holy Spirit, and nothing about Yahweh, the Father. Exactly. There is a spirit behind all of that, people. Right, we don't we don't right. pray to the Holy Spirit, and we don't pray to Jesus. But I Jesus said, when you pray. pray, you pray to our that. Father Yahweh in heaven. Yeah. Okay? We have to be careful of this femininity spirit. Thank you, Lord. That's why when you Lord look over... When you look over at Joe Biden and you see Kamala standing by, that's the spirit that's trying to take over that femininity spirit, which she ain't feminine at all. So that's the wrong woman to choose. But anyway, that Jezebel. there's a there, <laughs> right. And it is Jezebel, that spirit. So they're trying now. By the way, if look, take two preachers, tell them you got 30 seconds to get up and speak. Let one get up and speak about Holy Spirit and the whole church will eat them up. Let me get up and talk about Yahweh, the almighty God of Israel. And they'll say, where did this dude come from? Because there is a spirit of femininity in the church. It's everywhere. That's why I'm so, sh that's why. Well, I'm not going there anyway. Even women in ministry should be very careful of this spirit. Always honor male headship. It is the order of God. Always. We have lady ministers in our church. And I tell them, I'm not your pastor. Your husband is, so long as he's a believer. We've got pastors 
that's got men's wives in love with pastors instead of their husbands. Now, don't get me started. There's a spirit in the church of this femininity spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is not a female. She's not a mother. If that's the case, then Jesus is a mother. Because he told Jerusalem, I would gather you together as a hen does her brood. All right, so great question. Let's stay with Yahweh and his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, and Yahshua, his son. Now, we honor women. We honor the church as our mother. The Bible said the church is the mother of us all, but not the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you this. If the Holy Spirit is a female, then we got a lesbian relationship going on between Mary and the Holy Spirit when Jesus is born because the Holy Spirit is the father of Jesus. Come on, people. That's crazy. I feel like I just lost some of y'all. Let me. <laughs> what do you mean a lesbian? If the Holy Spirit is a mother, it was the Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary. So what's really, what, like they say on the street, what's really going on? Let's keep it straight. All glory goes to the Father. Everything goes to the Father. Throw that book Benny Hinn wrote, Good Morning Holy Spirit, throw it out your house. We don't wake up talking to the Holy Spirit. We talk to Yahweh, our Father. Don't get up talking to no Holy Spirit. Talk to Yahweh. Satan hates the name Yahweh. He hates the masculinity of the God of war, Yahweh. That's why he's turned Jesus into this feminine, uh, uh, little feminine flip-wristed. People tell me all the time, you ought to be more like Jesus. I said, you can't handle me as I am. <laughs> you want me to be more like Jesus? <laughs> anyway, good question. <laughs> And what you got there, Sister Sandra, there you go. That's exactly right, honey. I want to thank you all. Y'all know what this is. This is love offerings and tithing to our church. I go about once a week and I go to the mailbox and I say, Lord, surprise me. And he always does. Y'all know I don't take one dime from our church here locally. I've never took one penny salary. I get no salary, none. My church don't cover my expenses. When I go to these rallies, Clay Clark don't pay for my airfare. He don't pay for my room. He, nobody pays Brad Martin. Nobody. I do it. I. If it wasn't for these, I could not do the work I do. Y'all are the one that sends me to do this work. I have a little side business with gold and silver that keeps me fed. And then we make money from the Patriots buying club. The church makes that the ministry. I don't personally take that money. The only money I take personally is gold and silver. Those of you that have joined and you get that coin every month, we make about $20 off of each one of those every month. That's my income. And so this all goes to the work of the ministry, Toto. So I want to thank you all from the very bottom of my heart. I want to show y'all something. I recommend this magazine if you don't get it. It's free of charge. I get it every month. I absolutely love it. It's called the Philadelphia Trumpet. If you don't get that magazine, you need to get it. It's free of charge. You don't have to pay one dime for it. And they believe a lot like we believe, not all, but a lot like it. It's called the Philadelphia Trumpet. If y'all want to try to look it up, I don't know their website or anything. But I get that free in my mailbox every single month. And I love this edition, the fall of the English-speaking people. It's a phenomenal. Someone said, what's the difference in your belief? Who is that? I, I didn't see that quote. Oh, there's several. There's several. They don't, they don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, things like we believe in. But we believe a lot of the, you know, I don't believe like them on the Godhead, but I do believe in a lot of their uh, prophecy teachings and things of that nature. All right. Well, 
It looks like we have had another wonderful Sabbath day together. Pastor, you still have two more yes. questions. Ellie and Jan have been waiting a long time, and, and Eric. I don't, I don't see their hand. I don't, they're not on my screen. Oh, yeah, Ellie and Jan. Well, honey, they get preeminence. That's my favorites right there. <laughs> Ellie and Jan. <laughs> oh, I love them. They've already packed up. We're going to get them moved down here in the next week or two. I'm so excited. Everybody's jealous of you right now, L, that you're getting to move down here. Well, I love it. You've got a lot of snow here, so we want to go there right now. Right? Oh, it's 70 something degrees outside. See the sun? <laughs> oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> what so, can I do for you, Sister L? So Pastor Vaughn, going back to your um the the cusping of the Pisces and Aquarius. Okay. From 2012 to 2092, we just have like 70 years. Yes. From this yes. year. That's correct. Now that by the way, let, let me clarify something. Yahshua is going to shorten the days, he told us. So we don't okay. have time anymore. So we, listen, folks, we're at the end. We are at the end. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. We used to sing a song that said, all the armies of the world will someday gather and they'll join before that great reviewing stand. Then they'll beat their swords and their weapons into plowshares. That's when the Prince of Peace will give the last command. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound. A thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. Because our Lord is coming back to earth again. And it's almost time. Hallelujah. And Eric is up too. And Pat, um, Pat wanted you to teach everybody that wheel within the wheel song too. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead, Brother Eric. Okay, so... First off, regarding last week's homework assignment, the, the response I got <clears throat> was, well, I'm not really sure, um, but what caught my attention when he was when he said, well, there's not really a lot written about it. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know how much is written about it, but the scriptures, the, the, the few scriptures that we read last week, it was very specific. Yes. About what we were going to be doing. <clears throat> so that, that well, brother was... Brother Eric, there's so much written about it. As a matter of fact, I would recommend everyone go to YouTube and watch my teaching called A Millennium Mentality. And in that video, I teach all the scriptures about the millennial reign. And so he's wrong. There's about uh, 70 scriptures about the millennial reign. Well, I think we read like what four, and yes, even sir. if it was just those four, it That's was enough. very specific about what Amen. we were going to be doing. Yes. The next question I have is, if a if a an age is what do we say about two thousand plus or minus years? Correct. And we are going from basically a, a, a law and order age to yep. chaos. That's exactly right. If I'm hearing you say correctly, I'm going to need to double or triple my blood pressure medication because the next <laughs> plus or minus 1,500 years, depending on how long it's going to be, yep. I'm going to be pulling my hair out. Am I understanding it correctly? It's already started. That's why you're already starting to pull it out. Yes, sir. Right. No, I'm just talking about the time frame. So whether yes, sir. if Trump gets back into office, we're going to be continually dealing with all of this these problems, right? But. Trump can build a barrier against the results of this chaos, okay? okay. God, <clears throat> God can use Trump, and this is why they hated him so much. He was stopping the next age. He was stopping the agenda. <clears throat> and God always sends a deliverer and a savior for his people, 
to delay judgment, to delay trouble. So Trump is simply a delay. He's not a stop. And I said before the election, I went live as Professor Toto, and I told everybody, whatever American president that America chooses is the one they deserve. Even if there was fraud, though. <laughs> Even if it was fraud. Well, I mean, well, at that I mean, we point. We didn't choose him. In my right, opinion, my we point. didn't choose him. That's he my was, point. Yes, sir. We, we made the correct choice. He was just we made the choice. stolen. But fraud, now, fraud was involved, and so it is what it is. Okay, and then my last question is something that I have have struggled with or, or wanted to know for a while. When is death eliminated? When is tra you know when are we going to no longer have deformed babies born? When is tragedy no longer going to occur? Is it the end of the millennial reign? I'll show you from the scriptures one moment. Let's go read it together. First Corinthians. Uh, let's go. Let's start at verse chapter 15, verse 24. 15, and verse read, 24. Yeah, and then read through verse number 26. Chapter 15. I'm sorry, what was that? Corinthians 15, 20, chapter 15, 24. Through 26. Then the end he will have handed over the kingdom of Yahweh to our father when he <clears throat> when he will have destroyed every other rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. That's the end of the millennial reign, my brother. Not soon enough. I know. However, he's going to spend that thousand years putting all enemies under his feet. That's what you and I are going to be doing. Now, how is he going to put all enemies under his feet? Let me show you from the scriptures. You'll find this interesting. Uh, Romans 16 and 20. Read that. Now, this shows you how Yahshua is going to put all the enemies of Yahweh underfoot this, during the millennium. Does this script again? I'm sorry. Romans 16 and 20. Read, and the brother. father of peace will crush Satan under your, <laughs> under your feet. Shortly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mercy of our King, Yeshua Messiah, be with you. In other words, during the millennium, God's going to use the proxy army, the regent army. He's going to use the matured sons of Yahweh to destroy the works of Satan under our feet. We will be in charge very soon. We will be emptying out every prison, every insane asylum. We will be closing every abortion clinic. <coughs> we will be closing all pharmacies. There'll be no more medicine needed. We will be undoing what Satan has done to our planet. We will be cleaning every river, every stream, every desert. We'll cultivate it like a garden under our feet. All of these things are going to happen shortly. And honey, if that don't get you excited, I don't know what will. Hallelujah to um, God. It, it does. I, I've seen a lot of tragedy so far in, in my lifetime. And I'm just, I can't Amen. handle it anymore. I know, brother. So you know what? Even mm -hmm. let's say, let's, let's pray this prayer together. I'm going to look it up for you. Hope This is the prayer you need to pray every day of your life. Revelation 22 and 20. This needs to be something that comes out of your mouth. Why do you think God allows all this tragedy? Because if he didn't, we would never pray this prayer. Roman, Revelation 22 and 20. He who testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Hallelujah. Ha 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. May this be so. Come, Yeshua Messiah. 
the love of our King, Yeshua Messiah, be with you all. Hallelujah. And the prayer is, even so, come, Yeshua. If you're tired of the tragedy, if you're tired of the death, if you're tired of the war, the only answer is, come, Yeshua. Use us to repair the works of the enemy. In one day, we will fix what Satan destroyed in six days. In one day, under the ministry of the sons of Yahweh. This is what God saved you for. This is what he filled you with the Holy Ghost for. Not to just run the aisles. Not to speak in tongues. But to speak life. In the kingdom of God. We've got to get past this minuscule salvation. There's coming a day. When your very hands will raise the dead. God's going to set his army loose on planet earth. And everywhere we go. The dead will live again. Everywhere we go. The sick will be raised to health everywhere we go. You've got a job to do. Quit trying to go to heaven and get out of it. <laughs> okay, Pastor, thank you. Pastor, you've to... given us over. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You have given us over three and a half hours of your day. Oh, I'm and sorry. <laughs> No, no, no. We it feels like it was 15 minutes. But um I want you to not be um too tax. I'm mothering you right now. So would you please um can you sing Already. wheel for a wheel? Because you've talked about that wheel all day, and many of these people have never heard your song, and that's something that they could roll around in their head all week. So yeah. if you if you have it in you before we say goodbye. Y'all, Pat, Pat's sending me back to my recliner, y'all. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, uh, this little song, we sing it at our church all the time. I don't know if my voice will hold up, but we'll sure try. There is a wheel within a wheel, and it's turning in me. It's turning in me. It's turning in me. There is a wheel within a wheel. And it's turning in me. It's turning in the glory. I'm sorry, I can't do much more than that. But everyone needs to let that song get in your spirit. There is a wheel. Within a wheel. And it's turning in me. It's turning in me. It's turning in me. There is a wheel. Within a wheel. And it's turning in me. It's turning. In the glory. Oh, that sounded horrible. I'm so sorry. But I feel the glory of God. There is a wheel within a wheel. Hallelujah. Blow it, brother. Blow it. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah over your homes. May Yahweh's face shine upon you. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh put you in his wheel. May you get in that circle, in that circle of the glory of God. Because there is a wheel within a wheel. And it's turning in me. <laughs> Can you feel it turning in you today? I'll spare you me singing it again. But oh my, my, my. It's turning in me. Oh, there is a wheel. Within a wheel. And it's turning.
turning in me. It's turning in the glory. Sharabaye, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I speak over your lives today and over your homes. I speak the glory of the Father upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us today. I didn't realize, my Lord, 10, 11, 12. My Lord, we've been here four hours almost. I sure didn't recognize it. Hallelujah. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Let's unmute everybody, sister. Courtney, and let's love on one another for a few Thank moments. You. Hallelujah. Love you, love you, love you. Thank 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 you